What's going on guys? My name is Matt, also known as Thrifter Sifter. I have teamed up with Vindu and I'm doing a little office tour today. If you haven't checked out my channels, I'm on TikTok. I have a little over 300,000 followers right now. I do garage sale videos, thrifting, shipping tips, what sold videos, and so much more. My TikTok name is Thrifter Sifter. I'm on Instagram at Thrifter underscore Sifter. And I'm right here on YouTube at Thrifter Sifter. So I really want to get into how I organize all of my items. I currently have over 700 items listed and I'm gonna show you how I keep track of everything. A lot of people always wanna know what's with all these bins over here. So let's get into that first. So on all these bins right here, I actually have a different row for each one of these. This is row A. So I got A1, A2, A3, A4, A5. This is row B. I got C, D, and E right over here. I'm missing one right here. I need to find my black Sharpie so I can get another one on there, but I know it's E1 because all the rest are the other numbers. I personally like to list everything on my phone on the eBay app, and then I use Vindu to cross list everything. So all these numbers right here are SKU numbers, and in the item specifics on the eBay listing, you can go all the way to the very bottom and there will be a, a little place for to put your SKU number at. It'll say SKU. I'm gonna show you this one for example. This is B3. I was just working on this one last night. So these are some pens I just got at a garage sale. Uh, some Trafari I had that I just got listed. And then this one's actually from a Goodwill Blue Box uh, jewelry box that I ordered. So I just listed these as B3. I just put them in this bag to kind of help protect it and then put it right in here. I've got all kinds of other stuff in here. Um, like I have these jeans. A lot of my clothing, I put a SKU sticker on there like B3-3, just in case I ever happen to pick up another pair of Wrangler jeans with the tags, I, you know, highly doubt it. But in case I do and I put it in the same bin and don't realize it, that way I don't go grab the wrong thing whenever I sell something. So I have all kinds of stuff in here. I've got like this Looney Tunes watch. I've got hats in here. I've never had anything get damaged doing it like this. Uh, these are shirts I have listed. So this one's B3-7. This is an uh, LL Bean shirt. So I have this already folded up, bagged, ready to go. So whenever I get an order, I just toss this in a uh, poly mailer and send it out. So actually, you know what? I need to pull this one because I actually just sold this. I had it listed for 22 or best offer and it sold for 18 plus shipping. The only thing I wish that was really different about this setup is that I had everything on shelves because if I sell something in B5, I got to move everything to get that one item. So if I sell a lot of stuff, I will make a, I will make a long list of like everything that I sold and what bin it's in. So I'm not having to go back and forth and, you know, put everything back and then take everything back down again. So this kind of is just what works for me. We are currently looking for a house with a big basement so we can eventually get stuff like this on shelves, more shelving for storage space. We're really looking forward, when I say we, I guess I should say my, my girlfriend, we're lo really looking for a bigger place so we can eventually have an employee, someone to help us list stuff so we can get out and focus more on sourcing and doing stuff that we love. What I'll probably do is I'll probably eventually hire someone to do cross listing actually. Someone who can just kind of sit at the house uh, come in for a few hours a week maybe and just cross list or package stuff and ship it out or take photos of stuff to be listed it'll take a little bit of training but it's really should be too bad and that way we can actually up our uh, system and actually help build our reselling business even bigger so that's kind of the future plans we have going on right now let's take a look at the shelf though and i'll kind of explain how i got that set up and everything else so most everything that's on this shelf is already listed unless it's something that's just my own personal belongings. Down here on the bottom is probably the messiest part of the whole office. I've got like knives in there. I've got little small stuff, little glassware and boxes wrapped up already. Uh, it's just kind of a mess. I got books down on the bottom. When it, whenever we get a house with a basement, I like to get like my own bookshelf, you know, a shelf for Pyrex and uh, Fire King and glassware and maybe a shelf for shoes and stuff like that. Uh, this is what we're working with right now so that's that i also have a closet here as well and i have jackets you know what let me just show you I pretty much just have like some jackets in here a lot of times i have more jackets in here and i have them hung up i've got shoes up there 
you know, blankets and stuff. I also got like pots and pans on top of this. This bin right here is basically like electronics that I need to do a lot of research on or maybe stuff I'm gonna bundle up one day and sell as a big electronic bundle like old cell phones that aren't worth much and stuff like that. Um, I also have a bunch of pans down here as well. Well, I had a bunch of pans and I actually sold them all. I had a bunch of uh, Revereware pans, like a whole bunch in there, but I've already sold pretty much everything. I've got some stuff as well up there, stuff that I don't want to get smushed or damaged or just big stuff I can kind of put out of the way. It's kind of hard to see, but I also have stuff underneath my desk as well. I've got coffee carafes, all kinds of stuff. I also have boxes already packaged up with pottery in here. Just a little bit of odds and ends stuff that I just need to find space for. I also have a couple shelves dedicated in my garage as well, where I have like a bunch of different electronics and stuff like that on there, like my uh, VHS combo TVs, DVD players, cash registers. I also have stuff in there as well that I put in my antique booth as well that I have in town. I have a lot more stuff than this I've been getting from garage sales. Uh, in my other room and in the garage, but this is just a few things that I like to bring in here at a time so I can list. So I've got like some Care Bears here. I got it at a garage sale for a couple dollars a piece. This is just a box of clothes I have in here that are just folded up, ready to be listed. Uh, most of this stuff I've got for like anywhere from 25 cents to a dollar a piece. And most of this sells for 15 to 30 dollars. So I did pretty well at garage sales and so this is just my clothing box I've been kind of working through right now. That's pretty much the basic setup of how I keep everything organized. Now I'm going to show you a little bit of how I have my office set up as well as the supplies that I use in my everyday reselling business. So here I have my light box little area. This is where I take photos of a lot of stuff like small stuff other than clothing items. I'll do like hats and stuff like this in here. Let me set something up so I can kind of show you an example. So here I have this little Smurf plush little guy right here. I'll actually get up a little closer and crop out the photo, but it'll look pretty good with that white background. This is just a folding table I got at Walmart. And then I also got this little white poster board from Walmart as well. Also have a little hook up here. I'll hang clothes and stuff and I'll move that whiteboard and then I'll position these lights up and raise them up a little bit higher. And that's how I do all my photos for my clothing, pants, shirts, things like that. So here's a few of the things that I use when it comes to listing. These are black light flashlights right here. And this is a good example why I like to keep these on hand. The other day I was listing this Jadeite glassware right here. And this mug, for example, this does not glow, but I always like to check these because you never know if something glows, you have uranium. Look at this one. This one does glow. Here, I got this little figment plush in there. Let me move him. So there you go. See how that one glows and this one does not. So then what I did was I took a photo showing that this is uranium glass and usually that will help it to sell a little better as well. So we have that. I also have like cassette tapes right here for testing electronics that I'm uh, about to list. I have VHS tapes. This is actually a Betamax tape. If, you ever, if you've never seen a Betamax player before, uh, that's what that looks like. Pair that to the two. This is a VHS tape and this is a Betamax player. If you come across these, I would definitely pick these up because I, this I had to pay for on eBay. I can't find these. I had to pay $3 plus shipping for a pre-recorded tape. Most of these are selling for $10 and up. So keep an eye out for these. If you see them, I would definitely pick these up to sell them because uh, I don't know if they're a big seller like a lot of them selling, but I know that they're not cheap to find. And if you get them cheap enough, it's probably worth picking them up. All right, so I've got a couple different hangers here I use. I really like to use wood hangers for my clothes. I need to get a wood one eventually for my pants. I've just been using this for now. Uh, it has been working though. I keep Ziploc bags right here for storing a lot of my stuff. Uh, magic erasers I use sometimes for removing like Sharpies off of, Sharpie off of uh, stuff. Uh, screwdriver set, this comes in handy for electronics or uh, putting batteries in different electronics and things like that. Speaking of batteries, something that I picked up from Goodwill actually. Still have my Goodwill tag on here and I use this for keeping all my batteries organized. Uh, so I don't sell anything with batteries in it. I always keep the batteries so I can use for testing because I go through them quite a bit. Um, so I've got just a few different ones in here. Eventually I'll get more 
selection of batteries in here for testing stuff so it's a good idea to keep something like that on hand i love goo gone for cleaning sticky stuff this is the best thing for removing you're just really getting a lot of gunk off of stuff i just use regular glass cleaner zap is the best uh, lint roller i use these a lot for cleaning the lint off of clothes before i'm listing them this um, i use a tape measure for my clothes so whenever i do pants and shirts and stuff like that i always measure everything before i list it so a few other things glue if i need to glue something leather cleaner i also have rca cables here and i'll show you really quick what i use these for so i actually got this little portable tv thing that i guess you can put in your car or whatever and i got this at a garage sale for really cheap and I got it with a whole bunch of other ones that weren't really working that well. And it just wasn't worth a lot of money on its own. So I decided to keep it. And I'm glad that I did. I'll plug this up to a VCR player or DVD player. Different kind of electronics. And then I will put a movie in. And I'll put this TV up on top. And I will take a picture like that showing that it does work. And this really helps to sell items. You just want to put in your listing that this is not included. So that people don't think that they're getting this as well. Definitely keep an eye out for something like this. It will help items to sell a lot faster. I also like to keep a little towel in here as well. So whenever I'm uh, listing something, whether it's glassware, or coffee mug, has a little smudge on it, I just clean it down really quick so I can get a good photo of it. I also have tags here for like my antique booth. So I have a booth number for my antique booth and I will put it on these tags. So when something sells, uh, they know that it's my item. And I also have these tags these little price tags as well. And then these I use for uh, the SKU numbers uh, like I was showing earlier. These I get from Walmart. Uh, and they work pretty good. So what I'll actually do is I'll stick them to the top of my computer right here and I'll actually reuse them. Like this shirt that I sold earlier, it says B3-1. I will take this off and put it right here. And then whenever I list clothes, I will stick them back to the back and then I'll put those in that bin and put, that, put it with that SKU number on that listing. And then that will go back in the bin and I'll just reuse them until they kind of start to give out and then I'll, I'll get a new one. I also have a regular printer as well. I mainly use this for when I get sales on Mercari um, or Facebook sometimes. I need to print out a regular shipping label on a piece of paper. Uh, so I'll use this or for other documents I need to print. I got this in a state sale bundle buy for like five bucks and it works great. So I also have a little bit of storage space right here and then this is my label printer setup I have right here. This is an old deli meat scale. I used to be a butcher for about 13 years. And uh, I had this just from, I used to make sausage and stuff from home and sell it to some of my clients and my a business I used to have. And so I just been using this, it weighs up to 88 pounds. And uh, I've never had an issue with it. I don't know where to get this exact same one. I think they stopped making this one, but there's so many on Amazon and uh, I've been using this and it works great. Also has a little light on here as well. I actually got my Vendu up right now. I'm probably gonna be doing a little bit of cross listing here in a little while. Some other little stuff I have over here. I have like twist ties, uh, measuring tape for whenever I get ready to ship out packages, make sure that I have the right measurements in there. These little thrifter sifter stickers I have that I put on packages. Uh, scissors, I always need scissors for something it seems like. Whether it's cutting those labels out of that printer right there from Ricari or Facebook. Uh, so I have those on hand. This is a boxer sizer tool. It's got a, a uh, box cutter on there. And then it also has a resizing tool on there. I've got some videos on my TikTok how I resize boxes. Really, really must have tool. Uh, if you got a big box that you need to resize to something smaller to save on shipping weights, uh, really does great. Then I actually have four rolls of tape that I use, probably too much honestly, but uh, just real quick, I use a eBay tape, three inch uh, packing tape. This is, I really like to use this a lot. Um, I just think it's got extra protection. That's an extra inch on there uh, versus a two inch. And then I will add the clear tape for a little extra uh, support along the across the box as well uh, this is just a clear tape right here and then this one i just leave set on the setting it's on this actually prints my thrifter sifter logo onto clear tape it's called print Wiz. so check them out online they make these custom for you uh, and i like that it's got my thrifter sifter logo on there whenever i ship stuff out it's got a little more of my branding on there as well as my stickers as well Next, we're gonna go over the packing supplies that I use. 
So basically I just have my bubble wrap up here. I like to use a medium bubble wrap for fragile items. Then I also have uh, the small as well for small items, stuff that just doesn't need a lot of protection. And then I just have that three inch packing tape, clear tape, eBay tape. This is USPS fragile stickers, heavy stickers. You can get these for free on the USPS website. Uh, they have free uh, packaging supplies. I think to use this fragile one, there is a fee that's included with the shipping. So make sure to read into those details. I also get these from USPS for free. I use these, anything that's over a pound, like clothing items, like jeans, small jackets, or just but some button-up shirts are right over a pound and I can ship them in these for a cheaper rate versus shipping them in a similar size bubble mailer. I also keep four sizes of bubble mailers. So I've got these little small ones right here. These are about a, I think these are a nine by seven. These are a 12 by 10. I also have these are 15 by 12. And then this big one right here is a 19 by 15. I also have poly bags. I got this large one. It's a 19 by 15. I'll put like large jackets in here. I'll just toss them in here, ship them out. Really super easy. I use that for a lot of big clothes. I also use these for plush as well, as well as these small ones. And these small ones work really good for shirts, button up shirts that are under a pound going first class. I'll use these. And I use these a pretty good bit, honestly. And these are 17 by 12 clear bags. Whenever I fold up my shirts and stuff that I store away in my bins over here, I fold them up and I put them in here. I also put my jeans in here. Sometimes if I'm shipping out like this Pez box right here, I'll put it in a bag like this just for extra protection in case the package gets rained on or something like that and uh, I'll have it in a little bit of extra protection inside the box. So I have some small boxes that I carry, like this eight by six by four. I also carry a 10 by eight by four. This is a seven by seven by seven. I use this for my coffee mugs, a lot of other small items in this. This is probably my most used box right here. This is a 10 by eight by six. I use it for books, hats, all kinds of items. I can even resize these along and put stuff like Barbie dolls, stuff like that in there. I actually have a TikTok video up of how I resize these for Barbie dolls, pretty cool. Any other boxes I have are bigger boxes normally that I recycle and reuse. A lot of bigger ones I keep for electronics, things like that. I also have a bunch more down here. I'll also use scraps as well. And I'll cut these up to protect like video games and stuff like that that I ship out. This right here is a big box of packing paper. I always check on Facebook Marketplace and I normally find this stuff for free. Last time I found some, I got about, I think I got 10 boxes full like this for free from some guy that was moving in town. I've actually gone to his house a couple times and he has loaded me up. He still has stuff left he's going through, but I've got so much right now, I'm probably good for a while. But now that it's approaching winter time, you really wanna make sure you stock up on this stuff because not many people are moving during the winter time and it's a lot harder to find this stuff. So start looking now if you can before it gets too cold. Once I clear this box out, I'll actually use this for shipping stuff as well. As you see, it already has fragile on there. I put like little mini TVs in here, Pyrex bowls. I've sent probably eight Pyrex bowls in one box before and it's arrived safe. Just gotta really wrap it up safe in there. Maybe we'll do a video on that one day. Other than that, I just have a bunch of priority boxes down here. I'm eventually gonna get a shelf to put all this on, but this is just what I have for right now. So all these boxes you can get for free on USPS website. Probably the most one that I use is this uh, 13 by 13 by nine large mailing box. So this is not a flat rate. You can put anything you want to in here. I use a lot of these selling on Facebook because every, a lot of everything is priority mail on there. And uh, everything is not by dimension like it is on eBay or other platforms. Uh, and this one, whether it's something small or big in here, it's gonna be a lot cheaper than it would on eBay actually. So I use a lot of those. I also use this shoe box as well. Uh, this one I use for a lot of stuff. Only other ones I mainly use are these skinny mailing boxes like this. These are really great for shipping like Guitar Hero controllers, board games, 
just long, flat, skinny stuff like this. And then I use this one a lot as well. It's a tube box for doing like baseball bats, pull cues, golf clubs, things like that. Well, that's pretty much everything in my office as far as how I organize my stuff, all the stuff I use for cleaning, and all my packaging supplies. If you haven't checked out my other channels, please do so. My TikTok has the most content on there. I do a lot of videos where I wear like a body camera and I go to garage sales. I also go to thrift stores. I have an antique booth in town. And there's just a lot of content on there. Stuff about shipping stuff as well. All kinds of stuff. Also, make sure to check out Vendu. I have been loving the software. I'm currently on Facebook, eBay, and Mercari. In the winter time, whenever garage sales slow down, I plan to do Depop and maybe Grelled as well. Real quick before I go, just want to show you how I sold this plush. You can see it says Skew Shelf 2. So I got Shelf 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So Shelf 2, here it is right here. That's how easy that is. All right, guys, that's it. I hope you enjoyed my little office tour. Make sure to check out Vendu, number one cross-listing software out there. Also, check out my other channels, TikTok, Thrifter Sifter, Instagram, Thrifter Underscore.